jump in this thing and see what it'll do. <laughs> you ready to rock this bro? Oh hell yeah. 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 You said this thing ran. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> well, it won't start. Oh wait. Battery, battery's battery dead. dead. Yeah, battery's dead. Oh, so okay. it is. Well, this is my new triple black 69 four-speed Dana Charger 354 gear car, factory tack, wood grain wheel, console. It's an AM radio car, but who gives a shit when you got this caliber of car anyway? But I wasn't the one that found this car. Guy named Jeff was so he's got the story of how he got it from the original owner. So here's Jeff. Well, All right, Jeff. So tell me about this car. Well, years ago I used to drink a lot, and on <laughs> up until recently, uh, Indiana was a dry state on Sundays. You couldn't buy beer. So on Sundays when I would go over to Ohio to buy beer on Sundays, I discovered a blue '70 Charger that was sitting in the weeds, and I had stopped. I couldn't tell you how many damn times trying to buy that 70 charger the guy was an ass i mean he would cuss you out run you off his property yell you i'm sure you. plenty of us have run into those guys that don't want to sell them they have plans to restore them and you can see we're trying to get the ford out of the background there but yeah so anyway i had stopped about that blue 70 charger for years and the guy never would sell it he wouldn't even talk to me about it then um, that went on for years and years and years and then one Sunday when I was driving through there on my way to Ohio um, I noticed the 70 was gone. I thought well, okay. I missed out on it Well a month later when I went back through there this black 69 RT Was setting in the weeds in the same spot that the blue 70 charger used to set in so I stopped and Bugged the guy every time I went through there trying to buy this damn car 
and he would tell me it's not for sale, slam the door in my face, tell me to get off his property. And a lot of times I went by there in the summer, the guy would be outside. So I would stop and talk to him. And it was always just him and I outside when we talked about me purchasing the car or any kind of money. And um, July 3rd of this year, I had went over there with some cash in my pocket and he wasn't home. I talked to his niece. His niece told me, I was talking to his niece, telling her how I wish Jack would sell me the car because he's letting it set and rot to nothing. And she told me, well, he's probably uptown at his fireworks stand. Um, this guy was a big fireworks guy. He used to light, light them off for the town and, and had been selling fireworks every year for years. So anyway, I went uptown to his fireworks stand on July 3rd. Uh, my girlfriend and I had went in there and obviously on July 3rd, Day before the fourth, it's packed. Everybody's in there buying fireworks. Well, <laughs> Jack, the owner of this car, he was in there, the grouchy guy, I should say, uh, that owned the car. He was in there, him and his wife. And um, normally I would be as scared to ask him about the car because he'd scream and yell and cuss and everything else. But with the fireworks stand being full of people that day, I knew he wasn't going to say too damn much in front of his customers. So <laughs> I said, Jack, I said, have you done anything with that charger lately? He's like, no. He says, uh, I had a good offer on it. And he told me the offer. And I told him, I said, well, I can do better than that. And I offered him a certain amount of money for the car, which I don't want to put on tape because of you. But um, <laughs> I had offered him a certain number for this car. And I said it loud enough that his wife Heard it. Heard it. Yeah. So as soon as she heard the number. She heard the number offered, and told, yeah, Jack, get rid of this thing. Yeah. <laughs> She's like, Jack, you need to sell it. You're not going to restore this car. So. How old was Jack? Uh, he's 70s. 70s? Yep, 70 some years old. Um, when she, after his wife had told him that he needs to sell it. I mean, nothing against the old guys that are holding on to these cars and saying they're going to restore them. Right. But usually what? Eight out of 10 times, this is the fate of the car? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So, after his wife had told him he needs to sell it, he uh, dropped his head and he just stared at the floor for, I ain't shitting you, a good five minutes. Look at them pretty sandals. Yeah, though. those are nice. <laughs> um, so he stared at the floor for about five minutes and then he raised his head back up and he said, well, Jeff, you know, you have been bugging me the longest. He says, okay, we'll go ahead and do it. So we went in the back of the fireworks stand and we counted out the money. But the real story on the car that I got from him was, uh, in 1973 is when he had purchased this car off the car lot. Oh, so he's the second owner. He's the second owner. Okay. He bought it in 1973, and he drove it 73, 74, and he played it in 75. I wonder why the original owner only owned it for four years and then... I don't know. Well, back then, I mean, even nowadays, who owns a car longer than five years? Right. Yeah. So he drove it for three years. 1975, he put it in this barn, and he went to the service. Why, when he come back from the service, he didn't get the car out and drive it, I don't know. Um, but he didn't. Yeah, so, um, so the car sat in the barn and rotted away. And the barn was so bad that rafters was actually falling out of the top of the barn. And that's what happened to the windshield. With this custom cover here? Yeah. Uh, it had fell, went through there and bust that windshield. And the guy's wife told him, she says, Jack, you need to get those cars out of the barn because there was a 66 or 7 Charger in the barn with it. She's like, you need to get them cars out of there before the damn barn falls. So he got them out of the barn. The barn did collapse and he left us setting in the weeds. And then that's when I discovered it setting the weeds, which is a good 10 years ago. And I had stopped numerous times throughout the year trying to buy the car. And he never would until the day I caught him in the fireworks stand where <laughs> his wife it, heard the amount, you know. It, it'd probably still be sick. Well, actually, you know, his wife probably never knew the, the previous amount. Why not? Yeah. But um, I have talked to a lot of people since I bought that day, and I've had people shaking my hand and telling me I've performed miracles because yeah. nobody <laughs> never thought there was any prying this thing out of this guy's hands. I yeah. was just lucky enough to get it. And and you didn't steal the car either. No, no. No, no he no. knew what it was. He knew what it was. Yeah. Yep, absolutely. But, you know. Well, I mean, yeah, the... I mean, everybody's always asking me how much we pay for these cars. And so I, I have no problem. I mean, how much did you pay for this car? 22. 22,000. Yep. And let me show you the extent. I mean, a lot of people would think 22 grand for a car that looks like this. The rear frame rails are rotted. 
the back window area is junk, the rear floor pans are junk, rockers are junk, quarters are junk, the hood's junk. I could probably say more junk than good, but the caliber of the car, being a triple black 69 RT four speed Dana charger, I mean, look at the tail panel. Those are speed holes, less drag. The, uh, this is definitely worth fixing. This is a, a high dollar car. So, and to get this car, what did I have to do? You had to give me cash and trade me a baby blue 68 charger. Right there. So I brought this car here. This was sitting in my buddy's uh, barn in North Dakota. So this is actually a really solid 68 charger. It's just a ugly puke green olive 383 two barrel car, but it's pretty solid. I mean, it's got some pinholes in the trunk. Um, it's got a little hole in the floor, but you could easily drop a drivetrain in this thing and have it as a ratty driver, which is a lot easier to have a ratty driver than it would to make that a driver. Right. Yeah. So this is gonna be the wife's car, right? It is. Yeah. Yep. She'll enjoy it. We're gonna leave it just like that. Yeah. I had to pony up this car. I did could this car plus uh, what was it? Fourteen grand. Fourteen. 000. Yeah. So I had to give up this car and fourteen grand to get the black car. The reason we're telling you this amount is because everybody's going to ask me how much did you have to give for that car now you know yeah these cars these cars are not 50 cents no you know, people think that we go out we just find these cars for a couple grand <laughs> you know yeah. we're, we're paying big money 10 15 18 20 some thousand dollars for something the cars. days of a 500 hundred dollar charger and you can drive it home are long gone have been gone for a long time now there's still those there's still those rare scenarios where you can find one that somebody doesn't know what it is or know what it's worth and you can get a screaming deal on it basically you stole it which i have gotten one of those and jeff's I also gotten to. those too yeah but those are far and few between you can't really go out and find those deals you have to just kind of stumble on them um but yeah no this is numbers matching 440 four speed dana drum brake Three-speed wiper, factory tack, console. The uh, pretty cool car. And you know, it actually it almost looks cool with the. If you put if you left the white walls on it with the hubcaps, kind of give it the bullet look. Yeah. That actually wouldn't be too bad. And that's a factory spare for a charger. Yeah, but I almost think what would be cooler is actually some the '70s like uh, polished slotted mags or something like that, but. I mean, I could see pulling that look off oh, yeah. for the bullet car. But yeah, triple black, 69 RT, four speed Dana Charger. And the mileage is correct. <clears throat> 53,000 miles? Yep. Yeah, it's probably being so, and he parked it. And, it is. Yeah. But it's got the original knob or the original ball, the shifter, the console's there with the unobtainium piece of trim right there. Because they do not reproduce it. And it still had the original bumper jack in it. Hurry up before you end this. What's that? Oh, I want to show you the license plate that was on this oh. car. Oh, the license um, plate? Well, yeah. Uh, my girlfriend wanted to keep the plate, um, but when I got the car, the Indiana license plate that was on it was 1975. Oh, wow. That was the last year that this car was on the road. And you can't tell much by it, but at the bottom, you can tell. Oh, that doesn't go with it? She, you can ask her. She wanted to play because it was her birth year, but oh, okay. She's not that old. Come on now. Yeah, I know. <laughs> That's pretty cool. It is. So these were black. What color was the lettering? Uh, blue. Blue. Yeah, it should. Was have those been black blue. with blue lettering? Well, that's black because I had to heat it up to get oh. these with the okay you know, propane torch to get the damn bolts to loosen up. So that's, yeah, that's not stainless or nothing. That's just freaking stamped yeah. steel. Yep. That's an old plate. Man, they don't even come with a battery. I bet Sorry, man. I bet you didn't even put brake fluid in it for me. I filled the oil up. <laughs> Does it still have oil in it? Actually, I can't get the damn dipstick out. Oh, is it stuck? Yeah, it is. Yeah, I didn't want to break it. Yeah, I probably shouldn't fuck with it. But I do know that it's not froze up because I did put a battery in it just for shits and giggles to check the lights. 
And when I did that, the console lights and everything come on in there, and the door was Turn open. Turn the key and it cranked. I turned the key, and it went, it looked like a half a revolution to stop. So I don't know if it's a bad connection to solenoid. It probably, Maybe my yeah. battery is dead. I mean, it's probably the contacts and the starter are junk. I mean, this car had walnuts and shit packed up to here when I bought the when I first bought the car. So it That's may it. have some walnuts or something in it for all you I know. You took away all the authentic barn find. Yeah, yeah. Oh, it is a real barn find. They have all the walnuts. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the walnuts will come with it. Well, yeah, they're on the ground all. But over look at the there. grill. The grill on this thing is freaking mint. Because the bumper is straight. Yeah. I'm surprised the bumper has that much uh, weathering to it, being as it sat in barn for yep, so long. I am too. But keep in mind that damn barn. Yeah, that's true. It wasn't much of a barn, you know. <laughs> See, I had another guy on my other black uh, 68 RT four speed Dana car. I had a, one guy in the video say, "Oh, it's not a real black car. I could see red." That's the red primer, dude. Yeah, no shit. People yeah. don't get it. No. Yeah, it's a cool car. Triple oh, yeah. black RT, all original numbers match. 54,000 original miles. You play hell find another one. There's a lot of clones. Well, there's you know probably I mean? two or three of them at the gas station. Oh, house. yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I have seen a lot of black ones, triple black, but they're not real triple black cars. No, no, know? no. No, this would definitely be a mean looking car. Oh, yeah. This still has a sticker in the trunk, too. Yeah, it'd be a bad bitch. Redone. Yeah. Oh, and the uh, taillight cover right there. So, yeah. It does need rear frame rails. I got to put rear rails on it, rockers, torsion support, floors, both front and rear floors. A, well, there's an endless list. I'm sure the list will get longer once I get the thing cut apart. But this car is going to be sitting for a couple years because, as you guys know, I have a shit ton of projects already. <laughs> So I need to finish one before I can jump on the other. So I keep telling myself. But, uh, Jeff, thanks for selling me this car. No problem, it. Chris. Yeah. He kept telling me he was wishing I was backing out of it. Yeah, I was. I told my girlfriend, I said, man, I hope Chris really backs out on this deal. And she's like, <laughs> he's not going to. And he didn't. <laughs> yeah. No, it's a damn cool car. It is. The only thing I would have made it better is if it had disc brakes and a Hemi. That's the only thing that could have made but this car better. You can't be too picky. No, you cannot. <laughs> All right, well, I'm going to go ahead and attempt to load this sucker up, and I got a long way home because I'm in uh, Colum Columbia, Columbia City, City Indiana, Indiana, and I got to go to Las Vegas. So I got a long ways to go. Hopefully this thing don't shake apart on the way home. All right, well, see you guys. Thanks for watching. Yep, see ya. Oh, that was a long drive from Indiana to Kansas, but I told Jed I was going to be here in Kansas to stop and visit him. You know, Jed Scott with Jed Scott Speed Shot, the YouTube channel, the uh, cool guy, but he doesn't know when I'm going to be here. So I just rolled up in front of his house. There's his uh, javelin. So we're going to see if we can catch Jed in the wild, see what he's like when the cameras are not on him. <laughs> It'll probably just be TIG welding or something. He's always doing making something. All right. So we're gonna. I don't see anyone peeking out the window, so I don't think he knows I'm here. Probably in the back. Ugh, just rained here. Let's see if we can sneak around. Oh, what the hell? can't be serious. What the fuck? Dude? <laughs> what the fuck, man? God damn it. Dude. You don't just walk into someone's garage. You never know what's gonna happen. You can't be serious. Mm -hmm. Is that is that the radio playing or is that you're off your phone or something? 
Um, that's Bluetooth, motherfucker. You're actually <laughs> listening to that shit. You know, sometimes a man's got to listen to heavy metal. And then sometimes <laughs> he's got to decompress. And he's just got to have fun. But Did again, you, dude. Check you, your junk for me. Make sure you... Uh-oh. Are you good? Um... If you turn the camera off, I need to put this in there. <laughs> Dude. What do you got doing going on here? Well, getting ready to tear Jezebel's dash down. <laughs> but, I'm sorry, dude. I just can't get over the... <laughs> yeah, you know, I'm, I'm just saying, you know... Don't worry. We're not going to put this on video. This is just for personal... Or this is not going to put it on YouTube. This is just for my personal entertainment. If I'm having a down day, I'll turn this on and... <laughs> fucking blackmail <laughs> someone's gonna have a hemi in their garage here before we know it <laughs> i know where there's a couple of them at actually yeah there's one yeah there's one right over yonder right there yeah well that one might be kind of a bitch to pull though it sure look cool it would look cool <laughs> oh dude you don't just walk into someone's garage i mean you know have i ever told you about the actually i just seen a video where you pulled this out oh yeah yeah Oh, I was just about to threaten you. Ooh. Yeah. Well, is this threatening me with give me this so I don't show the video or threaten me that you're going to beat me with that if, and make sure? Oh, well, if I beat you with it, you can't post the video. Oh. And that means I'll have a free charger, right? <laughs> <laughs> i tell you what, dude. Where one day I was out here... Man, you get target practice just hanging in the garage here? Yeah. But you don't do that? This is manly stuff here. Men... Oh, okay. So you, you, know, you blow off stuff. your anger shooting targets in the backyard and then you relax with whatever the heck that was. Cindy Lopper. You even know the name of it? You know what? <laughs> I can't deny it. <laughs> you know, some days you just want to listen to some good old 80s tunes. Ooh, what is this? What is what? It's not for sale. It's not for sale. That would be pretty spiffy looking. Except you'd never see it, but it looks cool. I would see when I'm underneath fixing it. That is true, because you'll probably blow it up. <sighs> Are, how many of these carburetors do you think will ever see the undersea, underside of a hood again? I like carburetors. Yeah? Is yeah. that a good enough answer? I've seen a couple of your... Actually, I've been here before. I know you got some of those NASCAR worthless three barrels, but yeah, you seem to love them. No, I don't love them. Oh, okay. No, no, they're junk. I don't care what anybody says. Man, this thing's got quiet mufflers on it. It's sitting here idling at 450 RPM, and it's... I know. I mean, it... Don't even shake. That's Scott Speech off Ingenuity right there, man. I thought you were all about loud and shaking and noise. Not anymore. Oh. You heard oh, you Yeah, okay, yeah, you're... you're, yeah. you're, you're, you're I guess you're old eight. What the heck are those old skinny slicks? What is that? Those slicks back there? Yeah. Those came from my buddy John. What are those? Uh, they're M&H Superstock. Right These look like skinnies for a front. They're old school. And they're still holding air. Yeah, that's pretty cool. I drove my Javelin around the block with yeah, these. Those are actually kind of soft still. Uh, they just turned to dust. Oh. I put them on my Javelin for uh, going around the block once. Yeah. Scariest drive of my life. Really? Yeah. No grip? Nothing. They literally just turned to dust. Was it like driving a full-size power wheel? Kind of, yeah, because you got a bias fly, then a radio in the front. Oh, it was literally an ice rink. It was not fun. But they look cool. It does. That is a pretty cool looking tire. No matter how, I mean, they are really short and really narrow. They do look cool. But yeah, back then, that's on. We moved away from what we were talking about a minute ago. Mm -hmm. well, we can go back to it. Can we just pretend like that never happened? Well, I just came here to abuse your toilet. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'll hit the road. So you just... You... Actually, you want to go get some food first, then? I guess we could go get food. Ooh, let's take the Hemi car. Hemi car sounds cool. I'm sure Dad won't mind. Yeah? Dad doesn't watch this anyway, right? Yeah, Dad Dad don't know how to use a computer. Oh, okay. <laughs> Is he having, does he check the miles on his car? It's not hooked up. Oh, even better. I know. Sorry, Dad. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> does he, did he check the depth on his tires? No. Ooh, even better. Yeah, I know. We might just have to, you know, go utilize some tires. Well, you know, the battery will just mysteriously die when we're doing a burnout. Yeah, there we go. Yeah. Yeah. For the camera? Yep. Yep. 
and just go make our own drift course. Yeah. See how a Hemi car does. Well, you took away the drift course in the back back there, and now it's all rock. Rock could be drift course. Only if you're the general and you don't care about the paint. Yeah, Jezebel kind of can't. We could do Jezebel. <laughs> I'll make engine noises and I'll push it and you drive it. You're the more experienced driver of the two of us. Well, what do you say we go over there and check that Hemi car out? I think we should do that. All right. Hemi! taking small roads out in the middle of nowhere. I'm actually in New Mexico right now, 469. Cows have got themselves a nice little place right here. <laughs> what you looking at, Willis? Get the hell out of here, it's our place. <laughs> Moo. Well, that's what you think of me, huh? Just piss on me? <laughs> cool. About ready to hit up Route 66. All kinds of cool stuff on Route 66. Mm. Time to hit the road again.
good news and some bad news before I drop it off in storage. Bad news is, I think the motor's locked up. The uh, It'll rotate about a quarter of a turn and then just lock up. And even with the pry bar on it, I can't move it. And I pulled the distributor. I primed the motor with oil with the with the uh, drill. Pulled the uh, carburetor, sprayed a whole bunch of PB blaster in there, just anticipating the motor to spin over. And it did about a quarter of a turn. So that's kind of a bummer, but oh well. What can you, what can you expect anyway? The motor needs to be rebuilt. Um, on a funny note though, a good note, put the battery in. And I'm like, where the hell is the radio, where's the music coming from? And then I look in the car, I'm like, holy shit, the radio is on. And the speaker's working. And even better, the factory clock is moving. The second hand on these things never work, never. It's a spring round clock that when it runs out of tension, it hits an electrical contact and boop, rewinds it and those things never work. So the factory tack, the clock is spinning and the radio is working. Plus the dome lights work. You see that? There you go. Works up top. So, goods and bads, electrical works. I know the, uh, <laughs> I know the, uh, I know the dual points distributor works because when I pulled it out, I had the battery hooked up and I just happened to, I forgot to unplug the uh, ballast just real quick. And, I guess I must have spun the end of the distributor and went Poof, ow, fucking shocked me. I was like, son of a bitch. But, so that works. Um, but the fate of the car right now is I'm actually gonna be going and taking it up to the property in Arizona. I got way too much stuff to do right now, so we're just gonna go ahead and dump this guy up there. So, you will be restored later. I was actually kind of really hoping the motor would spin over because if it did, all I was going to do was just uh, make it run and drive and just roll it around in some car shows real quick. Well, here's where the triple black 69 RT four speed Dana charge is going to sit. It uh, is going to be roommates with Lemonator for a little while. So I got the motor for Lemonator at the house. So until I get the drivetrain all done for Lemonator, she's gonna sit out here and free up some space at the uh, house in Vegas. And we'll park old, I don't know, I think I might just call this Mamba, like Black Mamba. So we'll leave this old girl here. I just got it all cleaned out. I think I grabbed everything out of it. I'm just gonna leave the air cleaner in it because that's part of the car. So I kind of want to keep that. You know, we'll put it in the back seat. Ugh. Oh, what the hell's that? From Jed with love. What the hell? What the hell is this thing? Jed must have thrown this in the car when I was at his house. Inflatable sheep. You mother. <laughs> <laughs> it's an inflatable fucking sheep in my car. <laughs> All right. Okay. Okay, Jed. You got me. Payback's a bitch. Which, I wasn't going to use a certain video of you in this episode, but I'm thinking I am now. So, yeah, I think you might be a little embarrassed. Anyways, back to the car. All right, Jed, here's your sheep. I'm gonna leave it in the car. I wouldn't, luckily this thing didn't have a blow up on its ass, otherwise I would've just left it in the package, but all right. Your, your sheep is gonna die inside this car with this heat. <laughs> At least for now, someone's riding this thing. <laughs> oh, this poor old girl here. All right, well, here's the plan. Something's wrong with the motor. I don't know what. It might be something simple. It might be something bad. Uh, I'm gonna leave it alone for now because I have too much other shit. You know, I got I got laminator. I got to fix. I need to do the motor swap and uh, um, Smurf. 
for the blower motor, put the blower on at the four speed, the overdrive, um, finished patina. So that one is far off the list. So this one's just gonna sit here. But I'm thinking next spring for fall fling in LA, I will see what it's gonna take to fix the motor in this thing and then just make it the bare essential running driving car I'm not going to drive it to LA, but I'll probably trailer it there and then we'll just maybe like put it into the show. So I think that would be kind of cool being kind of like a, well, I guess I wouldn't really call it survivor, but you know, a barn find, drive with barn find into the show type thing. So I might do that with that next year. Um, but as for now, way too many projects. So Mamba, here we got the white sheep and the black sheep. Let me cut the black sheep Mamba. So. Anyways, this would be a good old girl, a good project. It's pretty crusty, rusty, but ain't nothing I can't fix. So, the uh, till next time, Mamba. And thanks for watching, guys. This wasn't really an elaborate video. Pretty much all I did was just show up, buy a car, and then just kind of had a little fun bringing it home. But that's all it is. If you're not having fun with these things, don't do it. No, so, I have fun with my cars. That's why I have them. I enjoy them. So, anyways, thanks for watching. I'll see you guys later. So, you think you got one up on me, Chris? Well, I got you a gift. Inside this package is the most awesome thing a friend could ever give anybody. As you can see, from Jed with Love XOXO. <laughs> it's just for you, buddy. This here is the most fun a man could have with an inflatable object in sheep form. So, just a gift from me to you. And we're gonna walk out here. And we're just gonna throw it away because right now you're inside my house using my toilet. So, so to make sure this thing gets put away in a nice safe spot. We'll just tuck that baby in right there. There you go. On to Vegas.